when we last left, uh, we had set up a watch uh, at the uh, Tavern on the Bluffs. Uh, Corin had taken the uh, uh, lead on covering the trap door with the desk in the office area that was found in the basement of the tavern. Um, again, in, in this area. Uh, the watch was set up uh, with Thongren first, so Raziel now second, Siona third, Corin now fourth, and Eldon bringing up the rear guard at fifth uh, in the watch. Um, at the end of the, you know, at, at, to recoup the last session, you guys did find uh, the tavern and you've kind of gone through everything, um, looted the place a little bit, uh, found, found a secret trap door in the office. Uh, and Thongren had managed to figure out ways of, uh, of breaking open wine casks. Uh, Eldon managed to stave off or survive a bout of blindness due to a, a mystical looking book. And uh, before we went down for watch, uh, I have it that he burnt off uh, his two remaining spell slots to identify uh, the staff that was found during the tree encounter and uh, to identify uh, iron, uh, the sword that Siona has, uh, Iron Song. I, did I miss anything? Sounds right to me. Sounds right. And then upon uh, discovering the nature of the staff, uh, Elden used a few uh, charges to make um, yummy flowers for the horses to eat. Well done. So, yes, uh, as, as far as... I'm, I'm trying to... F where did the write-up go? Where did I put that? I did email it, right? Yeah, that's how I knew it was a flower. I mean, I remember the sending out the identify stuff. I don't remember the write up or not. Right. Uh, no, I mean, I, I sent out that. I know. I know that we have we identified the staff as a staff of flowers, and I, I just wanted to re reread what we uh, put about Iron Song's sword. Uh, can you, uh, if you have it handy, Eldon, can you read that back to me? Oh, the the write up. Yeah, it was the same thing, only it added that disadvantage on concentration checks part. Thanks, Chris. Okay, you want me to read? Okay. Nah, you still mean nah I got it, I got it. Okay. All right, so yeah, we, we made a clarification on it, because uh, in terms of the sound of melodic ringing, we were not clear on that, and it's the the ringing ends up filling the ears of the evil characters that are in in the in battle with against Iron Song, causing disadvantage on concentration checks. So we wanted to add a little clarity to that. <laughs> All right. So that said, uh, Thongren, why don't you uh, tell us what happened on uh, on your watch? Do you want me to read it? Yeah. Hold on, I gotta go back to my email. Yes. <laughs> I want you to set the stage for where we are in the game. Oh, that's fine. I uh, I closed my Gmail. Hold on. How dare you? I just assumed all you guys could read. I'm just kidding. Um, so as the group finishes their patrol of the building and its immediate surroundings and dinner is made and consumed, the conversation begins to wind down and a watch order is prepared. Don Grimm continues his steady diet of various booze from the cellar, at one point deciding to drag a barrel clumsily up the stairs to keep the noise out from the area below, which people have begun to use for their quarters. As the orders turn in, uh, as the others turn in, Thongram is pleased to find that he doesn't have to drink alone and that Raziel has decided to join him over his watch as he drew the next shift and doesn't seem the point in going back to bed only to get up later. Thongram tells Raziel uh, 
of his family's history as much as he can remember back to his grandfather's time as blacksmith and honor guard member to Lady Ironsong through his father's capture and execution at the hands of the Church of Bane as they scrubbed any trace of the rebellion from the land. He tells how as a baby he was given to a neighboring family in the dead of night as the church's death squads came for his parents and how those dwarves took over his family business and he was raised in the uh, smithing arts. Uh, the stories are not without some tears and Thongren, you can tell, hasn't felt comfortable telling these stories often because of the possibility of his family's past coming back on him uh, because of the church's oppression. Uh, Raziel interjects frequently asking questions and as the story moves towards his time as a shop owner, the tone of the conversation becomes more jovial and hilarious stories of bad customers and customer service leave both men frequently laughing. As Thongrim continues his drinking, he persuades Raziel to break out his loot and sing some uh, drinking songs he's familiar with. Uh, Thongrim starts to teach Razio some of the local body tunes and more than once sings parts of a particularly crude one about a one-legged prostitute and a sea captain that leaves him bellowing with laughter. As the end of Thongrim's ship passes uh, without notice, he continues carrying on with Razio into his shift and the two uh, have a good time. Uh, Thongrim with his heavy drinking and bellowing voice and Raziel drinking considerably less and asking questions to absorb as much of the local lore and culture as possible. Before they know it, Siona is coming up the stairs to relieve them of their watch. She politely declines the invitation to join the rivalry more intent on getting her shift done and returning to her bedroll. Thongrim realizing that it's getting late and taking cues from Raziel heads back down the stairs, quote unquote, quietly before falling asleep perched between two barrels at the bottom of the stairs, snoring quite loudly. It's good to see new romance blossoming. It had to happen at some point. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, so as your, uh, as your watches pass, uh, neither one of you uh, uh, noticed uh, or observed anything uh, out of the ordinary. Um, obviously, as uh, as evidenced by your your revel revelry and your your uh, drinking and your storytelling, uh, Siona uh, manages to uh, make it through uh, the watch somewhat. Uh, it, it's uneventful, you know. Obviously, uh, the the horse is kind of you know bay. Uh, what is it, Winnie, nay, a little bit, you know, as they're just uncomfortable being inside in this strange place, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary uh, occurs. Um, uh, during Corrin's watch, uh, it's it's very quiet. Uh, again, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, and as the uh, as the the break of daylight uh, starts happening, uh, dawn, the, the red light of dawn starts creeping up. You can kind of see it under the, the cracks of the front door as Eldon's watch uh, uh, comes to uh, comes to an end, uh, again, with nothing else happening. So that brings us to uh, the early morning. Uh, you guys are still within the Tavern of the Bluffs, uh, and... Let's see. I think that is all that is fit to print on this. Uh, so I leave it to you all. What would you like to do next? I want to go outside and, you know, go to the bathroom. And while I'm out there, just look around and see if I can see anybody in any direction. All right. Uh, Maybe climb on the roof. Well, this is... Okay, we'll make it more fun then. Let's go ahead and roll a athletics check to see about climbing on the roof because we didn't see uh, any boxes or anything cr stacked up against the wall. Um, I'm going to use my mage hand and my rope and grab the hook and just climb up there. All right. So you have made your way to the uh, roof of the tavern. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check. Alright, you uh, 
spend your time uh, looking uh, down the, the the paths that you came from and uh, back down into the forest. Uh, you, you don't see that anything has been disturbed. Uh, you, you don't notice that any any debris or anything has really been misplaced or out of the ordinary once you guys boarded up the uh, the door of the tavern. Um, it's You see some woodland critters and some squirrels and such kind of uh, off in the field. Um, but no no enemies. You don't see any uh, uh, travelers uh, going down the road. It's, it looks like it's just uh, a fairly beautiful morning uh, creeping up on you. All right, then I'll climb back down and pack my rope back up. Go back inside. Gabe, was that you dropping off? Yeah, I'm having some problems with Discord, but I'll try and figure it out without bothering other people. All right, just let us know if you end up missing anything. Okay. All right. What about everybody well, else? Well, guys, I don't see anything outside, so should we proceed deeper? Should we take care of the horses? I was just thinking that. Should we? Would you think we could leave the horses in that first room and they'd be safe? Way safer in there than outside. Right. And less obvious. I just didn't know if they. I don't know. You know, water or and or grazing and or. I don't know. Well, we brought water in. I'm gonna go out and get some more. Yeah, maybe we give them rations this morning, and then once we're back on the path, think we let them free graze a little bit. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, let's go. Sounds good to me. All right, so y'all are going to go back to the trap door. Is that what I hear? Yes, I'll go down there and get someone to help me move that desk back off of it. Oh, wait, yeah. The, um, did we want to identify anything else by ritual, you know, while we're taking care of horses and doing all that stuff? I doubt my dice are going to be magical, and if they are, I doubt they're going to be useful, so I probably can skip on that. Okay. Um, and you don't want to do that book yet? No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to do the book for a while. I, I, need, I want to be in a place of safety for that. Um, but we had the dice and the harp. Um, what, was there, were there any other? Do you have the tech magic you can cast? I actually was going to let people. I did just pick that up as the tech magic. Um, is it a ritual? It is a ritual that I could cast this morning and see if there's any other magic around in the, the room down there. What are these squares? Are they five feet squares or ten feet squares? They are five foot squares. Okay, so 30 feet is wow. Um, where is the that's 30 feet. Should be six squares. Uh, I didn't see you do anything on the map. Oh, you can't see that when I draw a square on the map. Oh, I'll use a ruler. Maybe I missed it. Okay, yeah, that I see. Okay, that's thirty feet. So, um, yeah, I guess I could cast a ritual. You know, bring our stuff down as we're getting ready to go, and cast a ritual. Kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, it says, let's see. Oh, why don't I just click on it? Because I did just add it. All right. Is that 30 feet out? Like, so that would be 60 feet wide around. So if I cast it in the middle of this, room i would catch everything in the room and in both rooms uh depends on how thick those walls are 
For for these purposes, uh, yeah, we would uh, we would assume that you would you would see everything within your general area. Okay, so somewhere around here ish. Well, it's concentration for ten minutes. You could walk the whole place. Right, and it, so it would be blocked by you know one foot of stone. So we're going to say probably the outside walls would would block it, and probably okay. the floors. So I could do like the whole build, the whole inside of the building while people are all taking care of other things. Yes. Okay. So before we go down, to, and then that would I'd probably identify like the book that's in my backpack now, and the um, and I re-identify you know things that we already know are magical, the staff and the sword. What else would I have picked up? You would have noticed that the, uh, the, the potions that you had earlier, the, uh, the staff, obviously the stuff that you already have on y'all's y'all, possessions, um, everything else that we have, uh, that we have identified, sorry, um, everything else that, I've, that we have seen so far, it's, uh, everything is, uh, has been mundane. Uh, so including the the harp and the uh, and the dice. Okay. And since that's a ritual, that doesn't actually cost me a correct lot. Okay. No, it just it just costs you time. Right. Uh, Thongrim, uh, having uh, woken up with his face pressed against the. Uh, the great um, uh, when he woke up this morning he happened to uh, see uh, it, it, not not very not very clearly but he could see that the the great led to an underground uh, underground cavern of sorts all right well I can't you know it's dark I can't see anything so I'm gonna rely on someone else to either go first or I'm gonna send lights down. Can you all, can someone see the bottom? Do we have a leader? Are we on the metric system? I saw we put the dwarf in a barrel on Thom, Thom down. I suppose I will take a look down the, uh, down the passageway. Just not go down, go down it, but just take a look. So, a couple of things. Um, so the grate is, the grate is still, is sealed. And as far as I understand, the trap door is still shut. I have not heard otherwise. I lift the trap door. The trap door is now open. <laughs> um, and I guess, would I have detected anything beyond that trap door as far as magic? I'm saying that you would have at this point, and at this, you, there is still, uh, as you peer down, you do not see anything. Uh, anything glowing, any halo or any aura effect. Okay. So, can you see the bottom? Can I see the bottom? Can we see the bottom? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody needs to ask the question first, I guess. <laughs> Hang on. Can I see the bottom? It feels like I'm asking questions on prom night again. <laughs> um, yes, you can see the bottom. Uh, and uh, at looking down the, um, the trap door, you do see that there is a ladder leading down about, let's say, 15, 20 feet. It's kind of a long ladder down to the... The, the the floor of this uh, what looks to be a, a cavern a cavern chamber. Well, I'm gonna guess there's nothing in the immediate vicinity because otherwise, y'all's antics last night would have you know drawn them up. So who wants to go down first? I start down the ladder. All right. All right. We'll go second. And my axe. 
Damn it, Gimli. I guess I'll take up the rear. All right. One second. I'll be sure to stay out, of, stay behind Thongrim in case he falls. I'll just keep my eyes closed for right now so I don't know anything. Well, now that we've gotten down here, uh, the, the DM has realized that um, he had forgotten about torches that had been set up down here. So there is a dim light uh, throughout the cavern. Torches remaining lit? Sounds magic. Is a video game? Not magic. We might have company. Do we hear anything? Roll a perception check. I hear something. I hear dripping water. I hear torches burning. Yes, uh, we uh, you you hear uh, you do hear a trickling of water. Um, you do hear. <laughs> apparently, Elden hears and sees everything. <laughs> you do see that. Uh, the, the, there are torches lining around the, the wall. It is a, somewhat of a rock wall, uh, walled cavern. There's, um, you know, a solid rock floor, but, you know, covered in piles of dirt throughout. You know, it's, it's obviously cobwebbed, and there are some boulders piled up along the walls. Um, along the north, you can see what, what appears to be some uh, mushroomy-looking plants that have been growing up. And... You know, it's it smells a, a bit musty, a bit wet. Um, you do hear what you know. You do hear some watery, watery type sounds, uh, and, and uh, there is a bit of an echo that you have heard after Thongrim yelled "echo." So your your ears do work. Uh, and you know, like I said, it's about you know the the cavern ceiling is about 15, 20 feet. Uh, if you're looking up, you do see the light um, from up above shining through the grate. Um, and below the grate, you see a little bit of where um, the, the remains of the wine and uh, all that had been trickling down through the grate right in the center of the chamber. And uh, that puddle of water is kind of, you know, slowly running off towards the east. All right. As soon as Thongrim yells, I look at him and like, "Can you can you be quiet? We're, you know, we don't know if we're alone down here." Sorry. And did Elden notice anything? As his heightened awareness from casting and concentrating on the previous spell has helped him to see there's still nothing magical in this that you can I see in this area magical just what what this massive perception role would have gained him from uh, I, I mean at this point um i think you have seen all that there is to all to see at, in, at this area okay especially from your current vantage point. All right, can we, around that corner, can I tell if there's a like light coming, like, like there's more torches? You cannot tell that from where you are. So there's a way through here on this side, there's, and here. Yes. Well, I want to move, move up to, quietly move up to around where that, you know, here. Can I walk on that? Is that? Uh, that's, yeah, you're right up against a wall. Uh, so uh, you're doing this quietly. Or are you going into stealth? We'll say yes. Is, is for whatever, you know, uh, Thongrim did to give that away, I'm, I'm going to try to stealth. 
Right, okay, so that is a check for you, right? But there is a stealth. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll eventually memorize all this stuff. <laughs> all right, so you get up there somewhat stealthily, and you peer around this corner, and let me do some revealing. And you unveil um, a an alcove of the cave. You see another mushroom-like um, um, growth. Hang on, another mushroom-like growth here, here. Um, from your angle, you catch what you see as a bit of a uh, an edge of a treasure chest here, and a large boulder here. Roll me a perception check from where you are. So say it's, it's awful bright on here. Do I see anything that looks suspicious? Because torches put out 20 feet of bright light, so right. this is pretty well lit. So you notice uh, what appears to be a a small campsite. Uh, there are remnants of sleeping bags and kindling. Uh, there are several buckets over in the corner uh, in this area um, that have appeared to have been used for cooking and and other uh, uses. Um, over on the side here, um, right around here, uh, you do notice, uh, you see a corpse uh, there. Um, a dead one, but a corpse. And you, uh, you, you notice a, a distinct, an odd odor. Now, you can't quite place it, but you do, you, you, sm you smell something. Is it strong, or? It, it's, it's strong. Uh, so this is about 15 feet down, so the ceiling is about 15 feet up? Yeah. 15, 20, well, you know, 15, 20, it, it varies. It's kind of cavern, but it's it's a bit a bit of a ways up there. And I'm guessing from what I can tell, I can't see anything on the ceiling. No. Mm-mm. One second. on the floor. All right, so you hear a bit of a rustling uh, coming from behind uh, what seems to be each of the mushroom-like uh, uh, growths. All right, um, but I can't see anything. Hey guys, I'm gonna, someone else want to come here and take a look in case they recognize any of this? Preferably if there's someone who's not drunk <laughs> or hungover. <laughs> Thongrim does not recognize any... Um, he recognizes that they are mushrooms, but it's they just look very large and something like he might have seen before, but he, he is mistaken. Oof. I don't know, I'm going to say where I'm at. Who are we missing? They're all here. Oh, okay. I, I, I see Raz. One of them. Yeah. The no white background, yeah. I'll work on that. It's all good. This is a fairly busy background. I need to find a better token. One second, I'm sorry. 
Well, I'm going to, while you're waiting, just go ahead and cast Mage Hand. And I want to grab this torch off the wall. Okay, you are taking the torch off the wall. And then I want, I want to move it behind this mushroom and just kind of have it wave it around. All right, so just like, you know, back here, just where I can't see it and see All if right. anything happens. Roll initiative. How come I'm getting that error that I wanted to send it to turn tracker, but no valid token yet? I think you have to have yourself clicked when you do that. You do. Tries to do it for what does it for whatever token you have clicked on. Oh, I mean, I'm clicking on my character sheet. I would think it was already tied to my token. No, uh, you'd have to click the token. Roll okay. twenty doesn't work like that. Okay. Can you add that then, Adam? One second. Um, so, yeah, you're a 10. Yeah. It's a bunch of lethargic orcs. Yes, it is. Then. <laughs> did, the, did, the, did the torch surprise them? Yes. So we get another round before they even get the react, right? One second. No, that's not how surprise works. Oh, it doesn't? Surprise, all surprise means is their first turn, their action is becoming unsurprised. But they can still move. No, they can't do anything, but when their turn comes around, they lose the surprise trait. So oh. if you need that for some reason and you're after them, you don't get to use it. So these mushrooms are enough to give cover? That is correct, and the... the orcs are have are in full cover from you at this point um, as the uh, torch comes around uh, this orc here uh, who had a javelin prepared threw it somewhat surprised and it clanked against this wall um, so we have everybody right As far as the tie, uh, Siona and Thangrim, who wants to go first? She'd get it. Mine was the net one with a two initiative. Gotcha. All right. All right. Well, Corn, you are up. All right. So they're complete cover. I can't even really see them. Correct. Thongram might be able to see the one on the right a little bit. All right, well, I will move to right there, pull out my short sword, and stabby stab. That is a hit. Now, was I hidden still? We're going to say you were still hidden, yeah. So I slash him in the face for 16 damage. Would you care to flourish? Oh no, I just stab him right through the clean through the face. And through the face he was stabbed. And since and nobody... Dead. <laughs> Can I see anybody else from where I'm standing? You cannot. Then I'm going to use my bonus action to hide again. You are hidden and taking cover behind the mushroom. All right, then my turn is my turn's done. Elden. Okay. Um Um, 
Raz, you rarely gain benefit from Bless, do you? Yeah, I'm not, not too much of a specialist. Right, because everything is about their saves. You don't get, you don't act, and then you don't actually attack that way. Okay, so I, um, I mean, I would have learned that from last time, we, the last few times we fought. So I'm still going to cast Bless. I can remember what to click here. Um, but I'll cast it just for, um, for Siona, Thor, Thongren, and Corrin. And I think I will move. Go move up to here. And that'll be it. So the 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 blessed let's see, I can't add tokens to people, so Alright, um, so who's blessed again? Siona? Thon Thongrim, Siona and um Corin are all blessed. Although yeah, that's it. Three for three, right? Yeah. Alrighty. So the first orc is now unsurprised and will remain in cover. Raz, you are up. Scrape a piece of iron over my flute and give a flash of yellow over into the corner of the room hit right in between the two mushrooms and attempt to uh, cast fairy fire on the two orcs that I see hiding behind us. Right there? Yes, sir. Alright. And the save is a dexterity. Hold on. So, 15 and a 16. Both save. When you click on Fairy Fire, it should pop up with the DC for it. Oh, uh, I just got it as a spell description output. I'm sure there's something I can do. Okay. Because uh, the DC is your, like, uh, yeah, like I have a spell save DC that shows up when I do mine. Oh, okay. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, I'm, I'm only 14, so both of those were... I got boned. So, seeing that I did absolutely nothing, I'm going to scamper off to the left side of the room, and I will, I will, uh, sing a little song of inspiration for Siona, D6. And I'm done. I didn't see you move. I'll, I'll eventually move. I'm having token issues at the moment. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. I moved you. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so orc number two is also now unsurprised and will remain in cover. Siona, you are up. Um, I will move there, and can I hold my action until one of them gets in range? You can. You can prepare a reaction. Because I can't see either one of them, right? Correct. And that's it. What are you preparing? No. I mean, I'm going to hit it if it gets close enough. With my sword. Okay. okay, just making sure. Thangram. I'm going to run up here and recklessly attack this guy, which will give me advantage, but then give him advantage. 
Right, and so he's under f full cover still. So he still gets a plus two to his AC, right? And then plus two. That's here, right? Yeah. I can go there, right? Yes. So would he still have cover against me? Mm, probably not. So we'll say no. Here, Carl. We'll say no. That is a hit. You have you have wounded the uh, orc uh, pretty severely, uh, but he is still in in the battle. I will do nothing else. Corin. All right, I'm going to move here. Can I peek out around and can I see the orc Longrum stocking? Yes, you can You can make out parts of him. We'll say that he is in half cover from where you are right now. All right, well, I'll, you know, drop my short sword, pull out my bow, and take a shot. So it's a 15 after half cover. Right, so that is a... Uh, yeah, that's going to be a hit. All right. And arrow through the eye? Arrow through the eye. The orc falls over dead. All right, move, move back here, and I'm going to hide again. And then slip on a rock. <laughs> All right. I assume you were done. I am done. Elden. Okay, so Elden is is Elden aware of where he's at? This one that's in cover. I'd say you're you're probably a you probably got a really good idea where he is. You haven't seen him, but you're you've got a good idea where he is. Okay. Um I'll move up the square, but when I I just uh, when I cast Sacred Flame, he doesn't gain any advantage for cover. So I'm going to cast my Sacred Flame at him, calling down the burning light of knowledge, and he has to save, which he does not. Which he does not. So he takes eight radiant damage. You hear the orcs scream out in pain, and the distinct odor that you had smelled earlier now has uh, kind of an acrid, uh, burny smell to it. And I'm done. I'm just going to settle in where I'm at. All right. Well, this orc breaks away from cover and moves over to Thongrim. And attempts to hit him with a great axe. Which the eleven will miss. So he attempts to charge, realizing that you know it's now him or nothing, and uh, swings and misses wide.
We, we, you can take that as a free action if you want to speak that out. I'm just going to scream that. Does anyone speak Orcish? Uh, not, a lang- know. not a language I learned. Although I actually kind of do have an extra. All right. So we're going to say it's this. His turn is done. Raz, you are up. Uh, you can see. Um, just based on its reaction, it's uh, it's apparent that this orc is just a, he is frantic. Is he out of cover from my point of view at the moment? He is he is out of cover. Oh yeah, let's rear back, work on our breath control, and take a shot with that trusty hand crossbow. That is a hit. All right. Well, he is he is uh, hurting, and the arrow has, uh, you know, taken a bit of the wind out of him. But he is still moving. done. All right. Siona. Does anyone speak Orcish? Fortunately, it doesn't look like it. The orc's eyes are wide, and he's just petrified. Does he look? Scared or aggressive? So, scared since you said petrified. I'm going to say scared. I was going to make a roll for it, but we're going to say scared. You can see that he... It, he, it, Yeah, he is clearly frightened. His eyes are bugged out, and he is... Yeah, acting somewhat accordingly. So I'm going to put my sword away. I'm going to put my hands up. and move closer. Okay. Can you understand me? Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> so he, the orc, looks at you, and uh, I'm assuming you kind of have your hands up in kind of a you know, open-handed, you know, you, he sees that you put your weapon away, but he, you know, he, oh, hang on, let me, let me see here. He is speaking, con- yeah, so yes, he looks at you and nods his head, and yes, he does, he, he does understand you. I hope this was... I don't know. <laughs> I mean... Please, sur- please surrender. <laughs> like, Drop your weapon. So we don't have to hurt you. What promises do I have that you won't kill me? Can I revive them? Like, his friends? With, like, a healing word or whatever? I don't know how that works. Do they have unconscious rounds like we do? Mm, I haven't looked it up, but I think how it works, if it's if they take damage past their con mod, their constitution modifier, then they're, like, dead, dead. Well, I, I think it's just your discretion. By default, yeah. they don't get one, but if you want them to have one, they have one. Yeah. What assurances can I make? What do you want? 
You've just killed my friends. We've we were we've just taken up shelter in this cave, just to uh, we're constantly on the road, and I just I just want to go. I want. I want freedom. I want to go home. I tried to get up last night, but I could not climb the ladder. Something was over the door. How did you get in here? Well, what's it to you? This tavern... Your life? Oh, okay. Okay. The tavern was empty when we came across it, and we, we went through it. And we we found we found this door. We then we 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 managed to come down into the cave, and it was relatively safely. <laughs> Roll with it. <laughs> Are we still in combat? We're still kind of in combat, but we're we're taking a hold because it's still. Still see on his turn. This uh, take it. This is the longest six seconds of your life. <laughs> so, long and the short of it, he explains that uh, they came down just for relative safety. Um, as they came down, well, we'll we'll say they came down for safety, um, and they stumbled upon this little campsite area. I don't believe him. Yeah, can, I, um, can, can the rest of us talk, or is it still Sienna's turn? You, no, you can talk. We'll, we'll we'll play it out. Go ahead and talk. I'm going to step out from behind that and just ask him, how did you manage to open up the trap door, close the trap door, and then fix the rug back over top of the trap door? Like, something, something does that, doesn't that, add up here. I thought the same thing. The... The orc. Were there holes in the rugs? You could have reached up through the hole, right? And perfectly flattened it out. These guys were careful, huh? Yes, expertly, carefully, <laughs> majestically flattened out the rug <laughs> over the closed trap door through a through a magic phase of hand wavium. <laughs> Why don't you tell me the truth? If what I don't hear, if I hear. I don't like the last thing that comes out of your throat. It's my rapier. All right. I promise you. I, I. What? What do I have to hide? You, you. Uh, my life is at your mercy. I. This is. I promise you. I came down here with my compatriots, my, but you know, my my brothers, and we were just trying to take a take a turn just. For some relative ease and rest. It, Is it just of you? It's just it's just the three of us. Well, I'm just not used to orcs wandering around with no harm in mind. Usually, you guys are out rampaging and doing orcish stuff. Oh, well, judge a book by its cover, do you? He said in perfect common. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you know, if your story's true, I'll find, you know, I have no problem letting you leave, and I'll apologize for, you know, your friends, but... Elden's looking around. So can I, will you escort me out? Will you let me leave? As he puts his, he puts his great sword, great axe in, you know, sheaths it on his back. Where's the rest of your tribe? They are off to the north. They're up to the north of here. We were traveling in hopes to get to the next city in hope that maybe we might find refuge. Refuge from what? There are bad things happening. Bad things. Uh, the the church. I'm sure you must have heard of it. Has it's it's uh, it's just been slaughtering our people. We were hoping to just find 
safety. And I'm not necessarily from here, but generally speaking, a human city is not going to look kindly upon orcs wandering in. That might be true, but I'd rather take the chance because it's either certain death or maybe just death. But I've got to try. Are they are they hunting you out in the country or wherever you live? They're, we, they're actually hunting you down and... We, we had managed to escape, the, the three of us. Uh, as we had traveled the last three days, uh, we had not seen anybody following us. Can I tell if he's being honest with me? Uh, you, you had mention of church. I assume you're referring to the Church of Bane. Aye, the Church of Bane. And out of game, hold on real quick. Uh, Will. Um, roll me a... What do I want to... What is yeah, the... Chief Lot insight. Insight, yeah. Roll me an insight check. You you can't tell if he's lying or or t you you can't tell one way or the other. And our people have just been. Yes, I feel like we've been misunderstood. My particular tribe worship worship a particular god, which is has been considered heresy by the church, and so they uh, they've been when they see us, they hunt us just because it's heresy. It goes against the teachings of the church. Okay, well, looking around, there, everyone else like I'm fine with letting this guy go. Hey, buddy, your friend here doesn't happen to have the key to this chest on him. Do you know where it might be? Uh, this, uh... I... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I, I've saw, we, obviously, we've had the chest here, and, you know, we've, we've tried getting into it, um, but we, we really haven't tried that hard. It's... I don't have the key. I, I don't have. I don't have the key. If you want, I've got. I've got some silver pieces on me. If if you want them. Um, no, we're not gonna. We're not gonna steal your money. Um, I would say if you'll disarm yourself and let us bind your hands, we will escort you out when we're ready to leave. You can leave at the same time that we do, and we'll go our separate ways. He throws his great axe onto the floor with a clang and drops his four javelins. Alright, and I'm going to stand over by his friend's body and tell him if... I know our friend's over digging through that one that one body, but if you want to take anything off this guy before you leave, feel free. You are mighty kind. Um, I would... I know that, I know that he has... We all had some some coins on us. I, I, I only hope it's enough to buy us some form of passage. Okay. We, so, we let him rummage through his friend's bodies, but then we're going to bind his hands. So he, he wanders over to this guy and pilfers his pockets under your watchful gaze. Uh, you see, it's just some, some additional silver. It's just silver in this coin purse. That's that's all I'm going to take. And walks over to uh, Siona, who has been the negotiator so far, and uh, holds his hands out. Turn around, please. I want him bound behind your back. How's he going to get up the ladder? We'll figure it out when we come to it. He's going to wait down here <laughs> until we're done exploring. <laughs> The, don't the we door, have like another passageway to go through? The dwarf has a good point. I can't climb a ladder with just my nose and feet. 
It's a long ladder, can't you see? Is that middle thing a passageway? I thought uh, you said it was open. It is open. It's, yeah. Um, hang on. I suppose I can. Eldon's, Eldon's been eyeing that direction ever since. We yeah, wonder what that was. He, yes. because, Sorry, we've we've there, <laughs> we've been busy. Might be coming from behind us all. All right, hold on. Wow, that was a bit much. But yes, there you go. You, that's what you see. And there's no torches, so that's pretty pretty dark. Well, right. You can't see that far. I can see all of it. I can see the back. I mean, the, the light, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a little dark over there for Corrin. He's still got a torch and a mage hand. Yeah, so I'll just come down here and wherever my torch went. I just hovered over the middle of the the lake. Resummoning Mage Hand, you know, as bring it Do back I to me. Do I notice Thongrim eat the mushrooms? <laughs> I suppose you do. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna say Put the... that out. You don't know what that is. Blech. We're going to say we are out of initiative at this point. Um, so Yeah, if, if, as soon as Corrin moves, it's, that's kind of... Yeah, so the orc is bound and is right there. And uh, we... You know what, for Grins... Thongrim, go ahead and roll me a constitution save. Wait, that he has advantage. <laughs> he still have my still has bless bless. Or He does have his blessing. One d four. That famous no, no, no. Isn't that, isn't that advantage for saves? No, it's just one d four. Oh, it's one d four for saves. Where is it? Yeah, it's one d four. And you add it to your roll. I think he fails. <laughs> Even with blessed. Uh, well, because that would be like right at the end of this. <laughs> what do I have? One minute that I can hold it, hold concentration on it. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say that you you did fail it somewhat, um, and managed. It, the, they don't agree with you. They're kind of they're they're not deadly poisonous, but they were a little little poisonous and say that you know since you spat it out immediately. You, uh, uh, we're going to say, took 1d4 of damage. We'll take mine. Uh, he has advantage on, on poison saving throws. Ah. Because he's, because he's a dwarf. Well, then, there you go. You have saved. You are not poisoned at all. You take that poison damage and you shove it back in my face. <laughs> and he also he also has resistance. You need to remember that, Nash. I avoid the mushrooms. <laughs> Always do. <laughs> so I guess I threw up all over the body of this other orc as could you poor friend is sitting there. <laughs> could you would you please take kindness on the dead? <laughs> They were my brothers, after all. You don't have to vomit all over them, you vile dwarf. I apologize dwarf. for my friends. And I walk... I walk... Uh, I'm going to move my marker since I can't move that, but I walk the orc over here and uh, just sit him down while we continue searching the cavern or unlocking the chest or whatever. Find his feet. And for... For what it's worth, I had nothing to do with that dead body over there. It was there when we got here. You're going to bind his feet as well so that he doesn't get up and run around. I hobble his ankles. 
Hobble, oh, Jesus. Like, Louise. <laughs> like misery style? No, Jesus. No, like, of course. <laughs> you won't go nowhere. Just, you know, you loop it around. You've got a little bit of length. Just cut his Achilles tendons, you know. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> what right. dead body was he talking about? The, the one we saw when... No, the one that Corrin saw when he came around the corner. So we um, would... Behind that boulder? Like, yeah. Hold on, let me see if I can put one out there. Hold on, hold on. I want to do something to the orc. Everybody wants to do something to the orc. I stand orc. near the orc so nobody can do anything to the orc. That dead uh, body. Shoot. Where? Oh, okay. The one who was smashed into the wall. Yes. He had a mishap with physics. All right. So, do I see anything out over this or in this water area? One second. So, as you walk over there, the cavern floor gives way to a sandy area against a watery pool. There's a slow trickle of water coming from the center chamber. Um, down to the pool of water. The water glints in the torchlight from the surrounding chambers. Alright. Uh, if anything else, uh, roll me a perception check. I have to know oh, you're what... kicking, you're kicking the chest, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Corin, uh, you notice that the air uh, lacks a distinct scent of stagnant water, uh, and there, uh, the water appears to have a slight current to it, uh, though uh, there's, you know, no animal life, or you don't see any fish or anything. Uh, is this and, anywhere near like where that well we found would be? In? Because remember no, last yeah. last time we got well, we had well water. You don't see any uh, cutout or anything, um, but it's you know just given the geography of everything, you would assume that the well was able to uh, to reach some of this down to the water table here, but you, you don't see any. Um, you don't see any. The drain. Uh, from the drain from above is right about here, right? We're apparently getting dripped on right now. Yeah, we we'll say. Yeah, we'll say about right. Yeah, but the stairs. I mean, this was the, the trap door. It was in the one room, and then we went up, and there was another room, and it, so it was probably right about here or something like that. To be like, dude, spatial. I'll do the math. Hang on. Not that I mean it doesn't matter that much, but Oh no, we're we're going down this rabbit hole. <laughs> oh. Sorry guys. Eldon, didn't you find a key on the or didn't we find a key on that bookshelf upstairs in the office? Alright, we're gonna say that the uh I think the did. Didn't we? I thought we, we found... did in a box or something. We found a key to something. The grate is right here. Oh, Sheldon's standing right under it. Great. But you're just, like, getting dripped on and wet from the, uh, you know, the, the wine the ale. And, and the ale. So, yeah, you're just, yeah. You have disadvantage on fire attacks now. So, Thongram, yes, you are busily over there just aggravating the chest. It's not a mimic, but it's, it, you do hear something in it. Trying to do backflips on top of it? Um, yeah. Someone go try the key on the chest. Yeah, did we have... Who picked the key up? Raz, do you have a key? I don't think I've got a key in the stash. Let me look. There's a, we, we found a key upstairs. I remember us talking about it. I do not have it. 
Yeah, honestly, I don't have in my notes who has the key. Well, I know we have one. Let's say you do, the other. Okay, I have the key. Okay. Corin, come watch this guy. Okay. I'm gonna go try the key. Oh, no. I try the key on the chest. And you notice that the key does not fit said chest. Dang it. Corin, you got any lockpicks or something? I just happen to have such lockpicks. <laughs> Her face like musical chairs. Of course, Elden standing in the middle, kind of keeping an eye on everything. All right, so you know, waving my torch all around the the chest, I want to first see if I see any traps or anything on it. Roll me a perception check. You Good thing I have advantage. <laughs> <laughs> You don't see any uh, traps. You go through all the normal stuff. It appears to be a run-of-the-mill mundane chest. All right, well, I will uh, attempt to pick it. And you succeed in picking the lock with a click. All right, I'm going to back up a few steps and have the mage hand open it. All righty. In the chest opens uh, with lack of fanfare, uh, and you see a bit of coins, a few jewels, and uh, a couple of other things in it. If uh, the treasurer is ready, I will hit me. You have 25 gold. 120 silver, 310 copper, three hematite gems. Uh, who's a what's a gems? Exactly. Holy wow. Alright, so uh, three eye agates, uh, three lapis lazuli, uh, 50 feet of rope. Hey, we can tie uh, up more. Silk or hempen? Hempen. A potion of uh, what appears to be healing, regular healing. And uh, there is a scroll uh, I rolled up in there. All right. Um, well, I relay that information. Um, Sorry. And I guess, you know, nothing looks interesting in there for me, so I'm going to down to the water pit to keep looking at that. So on a scale of giant bloated recently dead corpse to shriveled out bones and skeletons mummy corpse, what are we looking at over here? We're looking at um, dead and somewhat bloated uh, fairly you know, I will say uh, re recently dead within the say the past couple of weeks um, trying to find my notes that I had all of this written out and apparently have lost them ah yes it looks like he has been dead for a couple of weeks he is wearing a a tunic uh, with a bit of a leather strap around his neck um, uh, next to the body is a large butcher's knife um, one might assume that he might have been the uh, the owner of the tavern. <laughs> I was just thinking that. It's a leather around his neck. <laughs> what, what? Is he wearing pants? <laughs> is, is that rock inside of a closet? 
he is wearing pants. They are they are very nice pants. It's it's a nice pair of pants. They're kind of bloody, but you know one would expect that for a, a dead guy with a butcher's knife next to him, also covered in what looks like now dried blood. And There does appear to be a key attached to the leather strap around his neck. Don't. Uh, as Thorin fumbles with a uh, Thorin. <laughs> Damn it. How did you even get the key? key from the body. Oh, okay. So, Thongrim... I was having to explain Carradine to her. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> or the guy, or, or Michael, Michael, Michael Hutchins, whichever way you want to go with that. So you, you fumble with the key, and you, uh, you manage to put it into the chest, and it is a perfect fit for the chest. <laughs> Good job. Good job, buddy. How big is the chest? You want to bring the chest with us so we have a key to a chest? I'm just happy that Thongren successfully opened an open chest. So, I'm, I'm taking a look at this water here. It's kind of rippling strangely. Is this, uh, is this well water? Is this something I could identify and maybe... Fill up my provision, my my flask with. Or... Uh, yeah. Shit. Uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is, I, I just want to take take a look and look through the depths of the water and sniff it and put a little. Take in my a little mouth. dip. Wait around in it. All right. Probably where the, probably where the gelatinous cube is. But... Probably. <laughs> Here comes the water weirds. <laughs> um, go ahead and roll me. <laughs> yeah, this this campaign is going to be really short. Um, go ahead and roll. Now that you are here, roll me a perception check. Well, you happen to notice the same amount of stuff that uh, that uh, Corin did. Uh, you do you do see the the, the current uh, in the water, but you know nothing apparently trying to cause it. Um, hang on, um, but you know there is a current to the water, which is a, a, a bit weird given that this is a cavern. Um, that the water seems to be, you know, seems to be, you know potable and so if you wanted to fill your flasks with it you could yep I'll go ahead and do that then uh, wait patiently for Mr. Orkman to go back upstairs okay So you have filled your flask with the water, um, and so the orc is over there just kind of slowly biding his time, waiting to go upstairs. Um, Eldon, you, uh, you, happen, you still notice that the, the, that the water is still slowly dripping towards uh, causing a small, you know, rivulet, and, you know, not, not huge, but heading towards the water. Uh, and, and Corin, you, you, you see that too. Right, so... So, what else... Can I tell how deep it is? Uh... I think you should be able to. 
everybody is skilled with uh, you know adventuring and everything. Um, yeah, roll me. Uh, let's say it's uh, oh, some other perception check, unless a, a nature check would do any better. Uh, probably perception just to see how deep it is. So you you notice that it does tend to go a bit deeper uh, than than you initially thought. Um, it looks like the uh, pool kind of goes down about twenty feet. All right. Well, I'm going to pull this torch back over here, cast cast a dancing light into the water, just have it run the perimeter to see if I see anything. Okay. So, did you say into the water or around the perimeter of it? In, into the water, down to the bottom. <laughs> okay. So I, you know, all right, along all the walls. Gotcha. Along every, along the whole floor. Gotcha. So the. As the light goes around, and uh, we'll say, um, where did that torch go? Beside me. Ah, I'll use that as the light. So, as it goes through here, um, it illuminates a bit of the uh, the, the floor. You don't you, you see you know rocks and de debris and everything. Uh, as it comes this way, you notice a a dark. Uh, opening about 10 feet under the water um, that the, the, it appears to be a tunnel uh, it's about 10 feet wide by your guess um, heading out looks like it's going this direction um, as the light goes around you just see further walls um, it's just you know solid wall that leads slowly back up to the to the uh, sandy, sandy shore here. All right, hey guys, I found a tunnel. I can't see in there because it's dark. So, does anyone want to take a dip? How deep under the water is that? About ten feet. That was twenty. The the, the the tunnel is about ten feet under the water. And the tunnel is about ten feet wide, so it looks like it's you know ten foot circumference going towards towards this this way. But there's hey, ten feet orc. of water on, before you get to the upper edge of it. Hey orc, do you know anything about that tunnel in there? What what tunnel? The Where the dwarf in it? Hope he's not wearing heavy armor in the water. I don't. I, I don't know anything about a tunnel. <laughs> well, it's it's no problem now. We have a drunk, hungover <laughs> dwarf exploring it. All right. Maybe someone should get that rope and hand him the other end of it, and he can drag it along. Okay. Oh. So, we're gonna we're gonna try something, and oh, rolling it. It's probably called a perception check. Yeah. Well, so before I'm gonna say right before he cannonballs into the into the lake, which is now imminent. Is there anything else y'all want to do in this cavern? Uh, we probably need to get the orc out of here. I don't think we should all go barreling under the water, leaving him bound and hobbled. So how about Siona and I just take him upstairs and escort him out while the rest of y'all hang out and we'll... I don't want him running around up there. I was going to say, I wasn't letting him go until we're leaving. Like, moving on. Well, if you leave him alone, he can escape. 
I was just going to sit here. Y'all are having fun swimming. Or that. <laughs> I'm pretty... I feel comfortable I saw pushing him out with a bit of a, a threat. Alright. Does anybody else object to that? I, I, I kind of do with our horses up there and such. We don't want to be sending them out on his own. I, that's why I think we should have just have him hogtied. And what if he escapes while we're... You know, unless Yona stays behind. I'm staying. Oh, then problem solved. We'll split the party. All right. Um, one second. Uh, Will, join me over in the uh, other channel real quick. So here's what I'm thinking. You could offer to stay behind and quote-unquote guard the orc while everybody else goes and kind of do whatever you wanted to do with him if you didn't want to split the party. Uh, I, well, that seems awful. I mean, I'm just... I'm, I know. I'm just trying to offer up suggestions. I mean, I'd say whatever way, whichever way you want to go with it. Um, just, you know, trying to avoid splitting the party if we if we can. I think you have a hard time convincing Siona to leave her to let that work go. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, well, well uh, we could, I guess I could try and convince her to take him with us. That that could work. Um, just yeah, I'll let you guys play it out. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't know. Part of it's if he. If he, you know, it doesn't take our horses, hey, why not just let him go? How big is you know? this chest? How big is the chest? We have a key to the chest. Yeah, I'm not locking him in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to give Eldon inspiration, though, for that. All right, I'm going to walk over to the orc and kind of explain our situation here. Does it? Look, we we don't really trust you, and we've kind of given you cause not to trust us. But with the you know unfortunate end of your two brothers, most of us don't want to kill you because we told you we wouldn't. But we want to go somewhere else, and they don't want to leave you behind, and we don't want to leave someone behind to watch you. So, what are you saying? How do we know if we send you out, you won't come back, steal our horses, or things of that nature? Or bring more people with you. Orcs. All I can offer is my word. How big is that chest? Probably too big for an orc. Or too small for an orc. I start unbinding his hands and feet. Alright, I'm while she does that, I'm gonna I'm going to grab his arm. I'm gonna cast prestidigitation to make my fingers all glowy and sparkly. And then cast it again so that a mark appears on his forearm. And I'm gonna tell him, you know, this is a binding spell. If you come within a hundred feet of us, once you know, once we send you off, it's going to explode. Okay. Uh, roll persuasion for me. Roll what? Pers intimidation. Intimidation, yes. There we go. We'll go with that. All right. Oh. Uh, get this thing off me. What? Uh, mm. It's going to turn invisible in about an hour, but it's going to remain for a week. So uh, don't you don't come back to this place for a week. You... Scummy! Uh, 
I'm sorry, he doesn't trust you, but we're letting you go. <sighs> Fine. Fine. I'm not coming back anyway, but fine. You hear him muttering some stuff under his breath. I start escorting him to the ladder. Is anybody else coming up with me? To the ladder. Yeah, I'll go with you. The, the, the radial ladder. <laughs> the stairs, whatever's no, up it's, there. No, it's, it's a ladder. I just, yeah, uh, my, my mistake. All right. I grab his weapons, too, and bring them with us. All right, so we are going to split. And as the... I go up, I yell, somebody keep an eye on Thongrim. <laughs> she doesn't drown. <laughs> All right, we're going to split the party real quick. Keeping an eye on Thongrim. Following the folks upstairs. Yeah, we'll just we'll just escort him to the door. We don't we don't need to drag our tokens all around. Okay. Unless, uh, he's... unless we're gonna kill unless he's gonna kill us. No, I was just playing it out. So anyway. Once we get to the porch, I'll hand him back his weapons. Uh, thank thank you for for what it's worth for not leaving me defenseless. I'm also gonna hand him uh, three gold pieces. I'm like, look, I hope. Sorry, we killed your friends. I hope this lets you buy whatever freedom you're looking for. But again, we don't want to see you again. And I'll know where you're at for the next week with that spell. So, don't cause any trouble. He looks at you, kind of unbelievingly, but nods his head and in and in, in thanks. <laughs> and. Off he goes. All right, so I barred the door back. However, we get that door locked before. All right. And we go back down. Join the rest of them. Okie dokie. And we're back. Most of us, at least. Even our orc friend. He'll, he'll be gone in just a second. <laughs> All right. So, Thongrim has. Hold on, I'm gonna get what, one sec. I'm gonna get, can I get a drink real quick? Yes. Is anybody wearing heavy armor? Uh, I am. I think. Well, I mean, it's mithril, so it's half. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's probably good. Still sinks. Still sinks, but it's. I, I think it's considerably lighter. Hi, right, Corin. This water is cold, but it doesn't seem to be anything. You realize it's also not alcoholic, don't you? Scrub a dog dog in the tub. Anyone got any soap? I do. That she does. <laughs> Washing off the barf. Scrub a dog dog. I carve him off a piece of the soap and hand it over. Toss it out there. All right. So, what kind of armor are you wearing there, Thongrim? I'm not wearing any armor. Apparently, <laughs> he got naked before he got in. <laughs> okay. Barbarian doesn't wear armor. I don't okay, know. he doesn't wear armor. That's right. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I had Gimli stuck in a picture of Gimli stuck in my head. All right. So there's a tunnel, ten feet in diameter, about ten feet 
under the surface of the water. Um, so if you want to explore it, looks like you're going to be swimming, which will cost you one extra foot of movement per per square. So your movement is halved. Um, I mean, I'm not going to come up with that idea on my own, but if someone wants to suggest it to me, I'm probably dumb enough to try it. I'm guessing that we don't see Thongerman experiencing any ill effects of being in the water. No, you no, he's he seems perfectly fine uh, scrub, scrubbing himself uh, in in the water. There is a bit of a current. Uh, I'm gonna but, toss Thongrim the rope. Be like, I don't know what you're doing, but if you're if you're venturing off towards that tunnel, please just would you give a little tug if something's wrong? Don't don't go crazy. Is there anywhere to tie a rope? Like off in that room, maybe? In the cavern somewhere? A stalactite or... I mean, you, you see some some rocks over here and here. Uh, you've got the ladder. Um, well, what about yeah. that torch that's nearest to the room? Right Is here? Is there like a... This torch... Sconce? This torch doesn't exist anymore. Well, the torch yeah, is... That, the, yeah, that it's torch doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, whatever it's attached to the wall would. Yeah. Uh, the sconce or whatever. Can we tie it to that? Sure. I've got some pittons too and a hammer. If we can just bang it into the wall. That's also I, a good idea. I just idea. want to hold it. Uh, if, if he encounters any trouble, what I want what I want him to do is, I'm just going to give him a little slack. I want him to like tug twice. Thonger, just give it give it a yank one two really hard. If if you if you see any trouble or need help, okay. There be ladies present, sir. Uh, <laughs> let me rephrase this. <laughs> if you see anything that you needs killing, pull the rope. Well, I want to get in the water by the tunnel and dancing lights. And I got the 100, 120 foot range, so I wanted to send them as far down as I can to see if they hit a wall or something. Okay. At least until I lose sight of them underwater, I don't know how far I can see. All right. Well, right. Ask, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Say what you're gonna say. I was gonna say the uh, the dancing light. Uh, you know, it goes uh, about. It goes out of sight um, at this point. It does not hit a wall, uh, from what you can tell. All right, guys. Well, it's apparently a long tunnel. Only we had someone with an otter, is it? Or say a bucket or something. So, so wait. Let me get this clear. Y'all want me to go down into the tunnel and explore? There could be booze on the other end. Well, who's who's our best swimmer? Who's got probably the highest athletics? Sure ain't me. I'm negative one athletics, so... That's me. probably me. I got an eight. You have an eight? Yeah, I've got a four strength modifier. And you're proficient and How do you have eight? Yeah, how do you have eight? You must be proficient and what's the other thing? Expertise? Uh so you might just six. That's proficient and a plus four. You've got a strength of eight. Yeah, you've got a strength of eighteen. So that. Mm. I mean, either it's a, some sort of class trait or it's expertise. Because Lindsay's got an eighteen strength and proficient. It's only a six. Let's see. Proficiency is choose two from animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, survival. I think I chose. Uh, persuade uh, athletics and something. Roll once. It's, well, it should tell what it is. Uh, 
there's an eight there. Well, it comes down and that's no difference. But I, but I also wear no armor, so um, I don't know if that, from a role playing actually, perspective or something, if that actually, I would, would say be you're probably to... better longer because you could hold your breath longer. Because your constitution is higher. At least I hope it is. Uh, probably it's a sixteen. So. Yeah, you're going to be able to hold your breath longer, so you get to go play in the water. What is your uh, constitution bonus? Your modifier? Plus three? Okay. So, looks like you'd be able to hold your breath for four minutes. If I'm reading all the rules correctly. That's probably about, that sounds right. I mean, if, if y'all want me to go swimming, I'll go swimming. If, if you can hold your breath for about four minutes, after two minutes, uh, yank, just yank and rope twice if he wants to pull you back. I'm guessing no one has, any, right. spells, no one has any spells to help him. Um... Did anyone look at what that scroll in the chest was? Oh, it's probably it's probably water breathing now. Someone look at the scroll. I give it to Elden. I don't want to go blind. What what are we looking for? We're trying to see if someone can cast this. Or see what it is. I give Elden the mysterious unidentified scroll. So, we, you want me to sit and identify this over the next ten minutes? If you, should, if you can cast it, you can know you know what it is. Yeah, I mean, just if are you gonna look at yeah. it or not? <laughs> sure, I'll take a look. Okay, well, you uh... perception to go blind. <laughs> Guess what, Eldon? You're blind again. No, <laughs> um, you uh, you see uh, you that you recognize the spell uh, as. Uh, uh, it is a scroll of dispel magic. I don't have well, that spell dang. personally, so I don't think I would know what it is. But it is on your list, and so you do recognize it. As a matter of fact, it is on all three of your lists. All four of you, actually, I think. Is it on his list, and can he cast it? No, I, it just has to be in the list of... For a cleric, it just has to be in the list. Uh, unless it's a level you can't cast. Right, I'm only. I can only. Right, yes. Correct. Ah, well then I. I only have up to level two. Right. In terms, of it, it is a it is a third level spell. So so. He's got to roll a DC thirteen. Yeah. So what do I do? But it, it's on it's on the uh, it's on the bard list. It's on the uh, cleric list, and I think it's also on the paladin list. It's on the wizard list, so I can yeah. I would reckon could go after it also. Yeah. But it's above all of our levels at the right. moment. What is a uh, this spell casting? Okay, so it's just a whatever your spell casting thing is. Yeah, so int int or wisdom. Yeah, I believe it's whatever your spell casting or skill charis is. charisma. Oh, oh right, I have, mine's wisdom. So I just do a wisdom check on it. Yes. I mean, you're not casting it right now, are you? No. I'm trying you're to just trying to see what it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, maybe I misunderstood you. I just I thought since it was on the list, you would oh. recognize it, but not necessarily be able to do anything with it. You're right. You're right. I'm misreading that. It's a DC 13 to cast it, but he does know what it is automatically. Right. Oh, even if it's above my level. Yes, but you, you still know it. It's just it's a D, you can cast it with a DC 13. Oh gotcha. Okay. Right. No, I'm not casting it. I was just I just wanted to know that I could identify it. Yeah, no, I just read that. Yeah, so you can, you definitely recognize it and it if it was in you know, if Quinn was around, he would probably be able to write it into his spell book uh, for future, but um, he is not. And so if it comes up since it is a third level spell, if if you want to cast it, you have to go through the you have to roll the DC thirteen on it. Got it. 
Oh. And I think if oh. you're casting it, it's the wisdom with a, a wisdom uh, roll. If uh, Raz right. does it, it's charisma and, and so on. Right. All right, so for, for brevity, I, we know what it is. I'm going to put it back in the stash. Okay, sounds good. Yep. It doesn't help us in this situation, so... I'm pretty sure here everyone but Thongrim can cast that scroll. Everybody points and laughs. Dwarf can't read. Alright, so no one else has any spells that could help him move faster, breathe longer, whatever. Inspiration or something, right? I mean, in theory, I'm doing roll. Uh... Sing a song! Blur, 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 glub, glub. Don't, 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 die. All right, glub, 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 let's see what happens. How does this work? So you're holding on to a rope, right? We'll tie, uh, we'll tie it around his waist. Yeah. yeah. All right. So just for, for grins, uh, we're going to... We're going to go, because I have no other way of tracking it, we're going to go into initiative. Just, and we are not in battle. We're just, I, 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 this is the only way I can think of how to track it. All right, so this is, um, since you have a, a plus three con modifier, you can, you can swim for up to four minutes by, uh, underwater holding your breath, which is 40 turns. Or it's yeah no, no, it's four times six twenty four turns. All right, and it is ha you ha you move at half speed. So if you're at twenty five, you would roll, you would go what twelve feet at a time, so ten feet per roll. How, how many how many turns you just say? Four four times six, right? No, oh, there's ten. Ten. There's six seconds. So there's ten a minute. He has forty turns. Yeah, it was right the first time. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. So forty turns. All right. Um, so it's. Wait, ten... hold on. Before before he goes down there, uh, that rope's only fifty feet long. Right, and I was just noticing that it's twenty. I tie feet. my fifty foot rope to that one. So 100 feet of rope. And I'll get mine out just in case we think we need to add more. All right. So y'all have tied knots in it. So we have roughly 150 feet of, of rope. Yes? Give or take. Um, all right. So let's no, hang on, may, may, one second. So where's the actual hole here? Hang on. It is right here. Oh, I thought it was. All right. Like I'll probably swim that direction above water before yeah, I go that's, in. Yeah, that sounds yeah, about there. And it's about 10 feet under. Uh, and this, so uh, this is, it's treated like difficult terrain, so you have to go, um, you have to, you're going to go at half speed, which I, I don't know how we half 25. There's, Always round down. Yeah, so you go 10 feet at a time. Um, all right, and I apologize. I, I tried to prepare as much as I could for this, and I, this was one that I was concerned about. Um. All right. So how do you determine how long you can swim underwater? According to the rules that I found, it's uh, one plus your one minute plus your uh, constitution modifier. One minute times. Yeah, one one plus your con modifier minutes. So if you have a con modifier of one, that's two minutes. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. 
I'm hoping there's a minimum minimum of one minute. It, yeah, as far as I know, it's a minimum of one minute. Even with that negative con modifier. Otherwise, you would probably die just standing up. Your constitution's too low to not always be inhaling. All right, diving down. I'm trying to make sure if there's any other check that I need to do. So we're all just standing here watching a rope. Yes. Got it. I'm going to go back to you, I guess. Whoa. In a weird drunken line, because I had the wrong thing selected. Tread. All right. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, I've got my dancing lights spaced out evenly it's until I can't see them. Whisper coming in. Okay, so uh, once you go underwater, uh, Thongrim, your communication with everybody else will be cut off, I guess, outside of the uh, rope. If you see the lights go out, or if you hear a message from me, I'll tell you what to do. So, you... Alright, so he's going to go off there... And go ahead and whisper, roll me six D10. The rope kind of gets more slack, and then all of a sudden, Thongrim comes bobbing back up out of the water. And uh, he's like, Oi, there's another beach on the other side. It's not too far. Maybe another 60 feet or so. Uh, you should easily be able Sorry. to swim it. He doesn't math. He doesn't math well. So, um, it's 10 feet down, 30 feet across, and 10 feet back up. So, so yeah, yeah, it's really, really, there should be no problem to swim over here, guys. And then just kind of disappears back under the water. Well, I'm not terribly smart, but extremely trusting, so I dive in and start heading his way. Your loop going to be okay while you're going through there? Yeah, I've got a case work. Every, everything we own is perfectly waterproof. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Adventuring, you get automatically have. I give a little slack to the rope, then I tie it off on that sconce just in case we need it to get back. I'm going to untie my 50 feet off the end so it's because we don't need 150 feet of it. How far was it? 30 feet. So, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I probably would need at least 100 feet to get to both sides. Okay. Especially from that sconce. So, all right. I guess when I get to the other end and get up back on that beach, I'll uh, take my end of the rope off and kind of just hold on to it over there. So you have kind of a path, I guess, to follow with the rope. Oh, we could use the rope to propel ourselves if we aren't very good swimmers. So I'll cast message, tell him to tie the rope off. Okay. Go check my belongings. Book, paper and books don't tend to like to get wet. Well, we could go belt. put our loot in that chest and then just take the key with us. I'm pretty sure the coins alone will fill the chest up. Probably. Um, someone has a spell that can dry us off, right? Yes. Okay. I'll trust that. I'll wrap things up, put it in my pack, and then follow the rope. So you, a lot. So you've bundled everything up in, um, and, and are taking it with you? Oh, boy. 
Why don't you put your books and your paper in the chest? Sure, okay. That's what I did. And I'll do the same thing with anything that would be ruined by getting wet. I mean, we are going to have to come back for the... The animals, horses and horses. everything else. And, and Orin. We have to take care of my Mastiff Orin. So, yeah, anything that isn't really water happy will leave behind. Or at least I will. I think all my stuff's good to get wet, so I dive in and swim across. All right. So, uh, we need to, I just need to make note of what's going in the chest. Um, so, like that book that I, any, any of the book, and maybe the scrolls, do, do you think we need to put the scrolls in there? Uh, I'd say magic stuff's not going to run. Okay. So, yeah, I just have paper and ink and stuff like that that I have, you know, that I always carry with me. Um, can't think of anything else that I... And then that book, the, the, the blinding book, that's still wrapped up in a... What did we wrap it up in last week? Or last, oh. last night? We just wrapped it in rope. Yeah, rope. That's the same rope we've tied to the. No, we had those links of rope for where where we uh, untied right. that boy. That's right. We had some. Yeah. Okay. So I put that book in there. Oh, that'll be good. You know, someone will, if someone tries to steal the stuff out of the. Yeah, chest, put that on top. <laughs> <laughs> and untie it. <laughs> and untie it. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's scary. Okay. All right, so the iBook, the paper and ink, uh, Siona, where you said you were putting some stuff in there? I mean, I have a lot of heavy stuff. I put the extra chain mail in there. Put, uh... Which, well, what would you, well, I mean... Like, so, how far do you have to go down? I don't, I don't know. What stuff would the horse normally be carrying versus what you're actually going to carry? I don't know. For adventure? Is, is there any point in, like, <laughs> doing all this or just <laughs> saying, hey, we're good? <laughs> Let's go. I, you know, I imagine once you get in the water, you're going to find out where the bottom is fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah, pretty, she is. Yeah, yeah. you're you're going to you, Siona's going to find the bottom pretty quick. How far do I have to go down? All the way to the bottom. <laughs> is, does it really matter? Can we just it, go it, across? It actually it does matter. I know it doesn't seem All like right. it, but it does. Well, I'm assuming a lot of that stuff is probably still with the packs and with the horses. Okay. Or do we constantly carry everything with us? I constantly carry all my... I mean, I might have left the guardsman outfit behind, but everything else is on me. All right, so I let's just say... I'm a weak. Let's just say the stuff that you would readily have on hand for, for combat, you have with you. Does that make sense? Would that, that summarize it pretty much, pretty well? Yeah. Your miscellaneous acquired loot ends up in the packs of the horses or in the chest. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry for the accounting, but it, it might it might matter. Oh boy. Okay. All right. So. I mean, if it matters that much, I can just stay back here, and you guys can go. <laughs> no party splitting. <laughs> um. All right, so we've got. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had to let the orc go. <laughs> Maybe it would have been easier. Well, I just if we keep just finding killed. reasons to not go. <laughs> that's that's true. Um. But where's the fun in that? Siona, is, is there something you want to tell us? Is the person whose god is a water goddess unable to swim? Oh, no, I'm a good swimmer. Except she's carrying 190 I just pounds. Want, I just don't want people to steal my shit. 
You don't want to expertly rehide the uh, trap door under the threadbare rug. Mm -mm. Can I take the ladder down? Or is it like firmly attached? You can absolutely take the ladder down. I'm going to take the ladder down. I mean, it might take a strength check, but yeah, you can, you can oh, absolutely no. give that a shot. We, we do have to go back up there. I've got Well, rope. I'm taking it down so nobody can come down to us. Torrance will walk over there and close the uh, trap door with the mage hand on top of it, smooth the rug back out, and then, you know... Now we, we can destroy the ladder. And is there anything? Is there? No, we're not destroying the ladder. I have a rope and a mage hand. I can put the rope back up top and we can climb out with a rope. I'm just saying, what's going to happen to the ladder if I take it down? You'll you'll have taken the ladder down. Okay. And the ladder can go back up because that's what ladders do. It's not going to break the ladder to pull it down. Unless that's what the Unless I get a for. one. Strength check could be to break the ladder off. Strength. All right. Hey, hey Thongram, do you want to assist me with this ladder? Thongram's, he's, Thongram's gone. He's he's he went back under the water. As did apparently Eldon and Raz. So uh, yeah, you you have easily ripped the ladder down, and it comes crashing down onto the cavern floor. Okay, let's go for a swim. All right. I extinguish all the torches, too. Extinguish all the torches. All right, they are. Okay. Uh, we will say that it is all dark in there, so I don't have to worry about fog or war. So it's, it's all dark. With the exception of the dancing lights... All right, so, Siona, you have plunged to the bottom of the floor, <laughs> to the bottom of the water. Um, everybody else has been able to sweep, uh, free swim over, but you have a, you have managed you have a hold on the on the rope. Um, so, I, what is your, what is your speed? Thirty. Thirty. All right. So you can move 15 feet at a time, holding on to the rope. Um, so, let's see, so 15. We're, we're gonna say, I, I, just roll me three uh, strength checks. Sorry, what? Roll me three strength checks. Just straight strength. Yeah, just or yeah, straight straight strength. And a fourth, the good measure. All right, so you manage to swim successfully through the uh, the dark tunnel um, to the other side using the rope for guide. And which will bring us to the next phase. All right, well, you've all managed to make it to uh, through the tunnel and you've ended up into a dark cavern. Most everybody can see what's happening here with the exception of Corin, unless his dancing lights are still with him. I'm going to go ahead and bust the torch out because it's right. bigger light. Okay. You see that there is an opening uh, in the tunnel towards the north, and I will reveal a little bit more to you. Um, I'm going to stealthily, assuming I can see in the dark, 
with my dark vision, I'm going to stealthily creep along the left wall northward. Okay, uh, you're roll me a stealth check. Okay, you are stealthy. Roll initiative. Oh, what? Oh no, 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 you don't go that far. <laughs> All right. Once. What is with my rolls tonight? Make it up for mine. <laughs> I don't even know what I can see. What's what we're and I'm. All right, so. The room starts to shake, and um, there are rocks uh, starting to tumble down from the ceiling. Um, it's it's shaking you somewhat violently to the point where you are stumbling as you move forward. Um, the you do see that there is debris and such falling down through. The tunnel um, all the way through here um, and if you are moving forward you get the impression that you have to move forward um, based on based on how you see the uh, based on how the room is oriented uh, so Eldon you are you are up so I didn't do that. So think you were feeling like there are things in this area in the area we're in. Well, as of as of right now, yeah. I mean, there's you 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 see what you see. There's nothing hidden in this in this room. It is the torchlight shows the barren walls and the sandy area and the water and and the uh, the hallway moving that way, which is now. Uh, the entire area is now trembling. Okay, but what I'm saying is we're something's falling in this room that's telling us we need to run out this way to get out of the way of falling rocks? Yes. Unfortunately, unfortunately for me, you beat the, uh, you, be <laughs> you, you, you beat the uh, initiative order. <laughs> So you are first. Oh. It should become real clear in just a second. Right. Okay. So what would do I have to do a perception check to know what I'm what I'm up against? Okay. Maybe it's going to take us an hour to get ten steps. Um, I hope not. Okay. I I want to move. To see, I to see down that corridor. So I guess I'll move over to here. Okay. And you said it. it so the place is shaking. Does that make it like rough terrain? It is difficult. It is difficult terrain. Difficult terrain. Yes. Then I, then I have fifteen. So my move is only fifteen feet. Then. Um. So that's all what I just did, right? To there? Yes. Okay. So I guess that's my move. I don't know what we're up against, so I don't know what else I might need to do. What do I see around this corner now? Uh, you don't see anything out to... Um, you do see the end of the tunnel. So let me reveal that.
you see that it goes out to that far wall. And then it looks like it can go either direction. There's a way to go. Yes. Um, and I, I guess that's all I can do. So um, I will, since I haven't used an action, I will just stand ready to move it to, to yeah, stand ready. That's it. All right. So as the walls tremble and shake, um, I need to roll something. That's a lot of the, that's a, well, one, what, what's a D24? It'll make, it makes sense to me. <laughs> it's a random number generator. Rocks start falling from the ceiling. Landing with a crashing thud. Corin, you are up. Okay, I... Well, you know, I'm going to move to... Let's see, one, two, three, to here. Can I tell what's causing any of this to happen? Uh, roll me... Roll me a perception check. Difficult terrain distance. Yeah, difficult terrain. So no, I can't see what's going no, on. You don't you don't see anything apparent that is causing it. It could either be, you know, it could be mechanical, it could be magical in nature it could be you know somebody it could just be geologic <laughs> well, did that use my action uh no i'll get I'll, I'll give that one to you all right i'm just going to bonus action dash and take two steps back i'm done res So as the as the room is shaking and the the rocks are falling from the season uh, from the ceiling, um, as these rocks fall, the room is still shaking. Yes. So I don't. For some reason, my fight or flight re reflex is is off polarity today. So I actually go forward and try to jump on that rock ahead of me that just fell, thinking that if I jump on top of it, nothing can fall on top of me because it already fell. Okay. Uh, where did I write that down? You can absolutely climb on it, so uh, give, give me a, a strength check or an athletics check. And that was a strength save. Yeah. Yeah, make it an athletics check. So you manage to scramble on top of the rock. Oh no, you got <laughs> you, you got there you go. <laughs> You're on top of the rock. And and I guess I take the dodge action. And <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> okay. Siona? I was also thinking, like Raz, that if I got on a rock, it wouldn't hit me. Um, so I'm going to move my 15 feet, and then I'm going to use my action to dash. Okay. I'm going to climb up on a rock. Roll an athletics check. You easily, easily made it. 
Tongram. I'm just going to panic and run screaming. <laughs> Do you have something on difficult terrain? Uh, being a mountain dwarf? You ask good questions. It just occurred to me. I don't think so. Flip into it real fast. Let's see. Oh, uh, alignment size, dark vision, dwarven resilience. That's poison. No, I don't think so. It's all stone cutting and stuff like that. But no. Well, damn. So this is all. This is difficult terrain now. The whole way because it's shaking. Yes. So if, we, so if we dash, we can move five steps. That just doubles your movement, so if your movement's halved, it's yes. yeah, double. Yeah. So it's your full movement. Are you a mountain dwarf or hill dwarf? Mountain dwarf. Where is combat? Alright, I'm done. Alright, Elden. Still wondering why people are running into the falling rocks. Because he said we couldn't leave. Or I would have left. He was like, uh, can we swim back? I don't think um, I ever said that. We, you just, they, they, got, they read that as the impression you have to go forward as. You yeah, must you go could, forward. yeah, you said that, and that's why you I said was you must go forward. Are things falling in the area we're standing? Because I'm like, I'll stand here and wait till things stop falling if if I don't feel like anything's falling where I'm standing. Yeah, I feel the same way. So I took two steps back. You know, do I, and so I'll ask again, is anything fall? Does it feel like anything's falling in this area that where we're standing? Yeah, all I can tell you right now is everything is currently shaking. Well, everybody seems to be going the same way, and Elden doesn't like being left behind. And so I can dash can get me back to my regular distance I can go? Dashing will give you normal movement speed. In difficult terrain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that costs the action? Yes. And of course, people are already on those rocks. Um, okay, I'll just. All right. I'll get pummeled by a rock, I'm sure. There we go. I've moved. All right. So as it comes back around, one rock. Rock falls, rock falls. And wait, that one was supposed to be. There we go. All right, so rocks have fallen all around you, and the ones that previously fallen are starting to shake. Corin, you are up. All right, well, the first thing I do is I'm going to yell to Thongram and say, this might be a good time to get kind of angry at this. 
you know, just saying. So I will move my movement up to there. Can I see the ceiling? Yeah. Like how yeah. how tall? It's about yeah, about the same as the other one, about twenty feet. You know, tw and maybe a little taller, twenty twenty five feet up. All right. I, again, I'm gonna look around and see if I can see anything that might be causing it, or that I can, you know. Lever I can flip to make it not cause it. Oddly enough, you do not see any rocks up on the ceiling. It seems solid. Uh, this rock right, that's right next to me. I just, you know, poke it with my sword to make sure it's real. It is real. It does, it, you know, your your stick does hit it with a small little tink. All right, well, if I can't see anything that would help me, I guess I will dash forward some more. Um, end up right there, and I will, if it helps, use my action to dodge. Okay. To ready a dodge. Uh, dodge is an action to take, so. So I'm I'm done. All right, Raz. Um, yeah, I'm also gonna dash for. Can I dash and dodge at the same time? Is that two actions? Uh, for you guys, dash and dodge are exclusive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to dash. Then I'm just gonna get out of this corridor as fast as I can. And shoot in between these two rocks and uh, and dash forward. Uh, twenty feet. Okay. Just kind of look around, see, look at the ceiling, see what's going on. Uh, it seems like a solid stone ceiling, from what you can tell. Um, it, it, you know, there doesn't, there are no uh, holes where rocks have fallen. You don't see any rocks just suspended. It's a solid stone ceiling. But you also see a little bit more of of the chamber. All right, hang on. I'm, from what you can tell, I'm revealing more of the map for you. I'm just up one with my additional dash. Yep. Siona, you were up. Okay, I'll use my movement and my action to dash. Do I see anything that would be causing the room to shake and the rocks to fall? No, you don't see anything different than uh, what I've explained uh, to them. There's nothing to the naked eye that, that shows that. That's it. Okay. Thangra? Dash a dash, dun dun. Dash dash. Eldon. Hmm. I think I can only get. Oh, okay. That's where I'm going. Alrighty. Um. Since that's a dash, I'm, that's it. I'm done. Yes. All right. So the first rocks that had fallen that had been shaking disappear from the ground. And like more. just vanish or? Yes, they, they vanish. One second.
and several more rocks fall in their place. That. And Corin is running the luck of the Irish, apparently. The ones that fell the last round have started to shake. Um, Corin, you are up. All right. Well, I'm going to move to here. And is that as far down as I can see? How far can you see? Uh, well, torch is 20 feet of bright, 20 feet more of dim. Yeah, and uh, Thongram, what's your dark vision? 60 feet? Uh, uh, maybe. I didn't know there was a range to it. Yeah, there 60 is feet. 60 feet for most dark vision. Mine's 60 feet. Sure, we'll go with that. What page is that on? Yeah, it's 60. I see it here. Okay. All right. And Corin, that's as far as you can move. No, I still have my dash left. Okay. So I'm going to dash up three more. So that, I don't know if that gives me more I can see. Okay. Um, I think that covers. I mean, you don't have dark vision, so I mean, I, I think that's what you can see. Uh, but as you dash away from that that area, the corner there, everything simply stops moving, and the rocks that were there disappear somewhat. Oh, I'd say, I'd say now is it, uh... I'm going to finish my turn off with a dodge just to be safe. I killed you. Whoops. Who did I kill? <laughs> Wait, where did I go? <laughs> Whoops. Rocks fell, you died. <laughs> rocks fall, you die. Who used to say that? The normal D and D thing. Rocks, rocks fall, everybody dies. That is that where y'all were, or were, there you go. I was next. I, yeah, there. So, we sorry about that. You got a bit aggressive with the uh, the multi. Two thongrams. <laughs> Wait, two thongrams. Wait, how the hell did you There's get up there? Thongrim. Thongrim. All right. Move so fast, you see him in two places. <laughs> um, I'm thinking I might communicate that. Are we still in, in an issue? Uh, you were not in an issue anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, the rooms immediately stopped shaking the moment that he moved out of, the, the last of you moved out of this this area. Right? That well, square. I could burn a spell, or I, we could t spend ten minutes, and I can cast detect um, magic to figure out what we can. Anybody? I mean, we made it through. What's the point? I mean, I'm kind of curious about anything in front of us too. I would say ritual cast it. That's a 10 minute. Um... I mean, I can use that time while you're casting that to just poke around this little area right here. Which, okay, I wasn't. Where? where? And without going too far forward, too far back, you cast a spell, this tech magic, and I'll just look around. 
Okay. Like, I don't want to get too close to whatever that thing over there is. Okay, then. Yeah, um, let's... Um, everybody okay with it doing this as a ritual, or do we need faster results? Well, if we need... If we need faster results, then we will have... Then you can stop ritualing it and cast it for real. Okay. Sounds fair. All right. As a ritual. While he's doing that, does anybody have a mirror? Where's Thongren going? He's beyond my range at the moment. Thongrim, did you move there? I just wandered around. I get bored. Okay. Ten minutes is a long time for me. All right. Well, hang on. The... Uh... I'll do my human detect magic. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you did. You leave me alone. <laughs> um, the statue in the center of the room um, is an ornate octopus statue with arms wrapped around the pillar. A giant emerald embedded in the center of the there's a, a giant emerald embedded in the center of the statue. Uh, and it's currently glowing a, a, great, a bright, bright green. And as Thungrim wandered into the room, it shot a green blast at him. Uh, where is it? Um, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw, please. All right, so you take, you will take half of of a one d eight, so you will take two damage. Um, did you actually roll real physical dice? I did. <laughs> He's been doing that for a while, haven't you heard? Oh, I guess not. I've been paying. Um. As as the uh, blast emanates from the emerald, uh, it, it's the the light from the emerald has noticeably diminished. Are we still in difficult terrain? No, you are not in difficult terrain. Does this break the concentrate? Is it? Break the concentration for not, casting a ritual. Not, not for you, unless you were surprised by what happened over here. But I'm going to say you were uh, are, are fine. But since Thunder, I know we've only been, been with the party for a few hours or a day of game time. I think none of us are surprised at his antics now. Ah! <laughs> Damn it, Thungrim! Is he the, still the, moving in there? The, another force blast emanates from the emerald inside of the octopus statue. Uh, roll a <laughs> deep, another dexterity <laughs> saving throw for me, please. Um, all right. And you take four damage. And the light from the emerald has... Uh, noticeably dimmed again. Ow, 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 ow! I'm trying to... Would you Don't stop hit it. moving? Don't hit it. You get hit Are again. We... Roll another dexterity save. <laughs> well, Alright. You take two damage. And I'm going to reveal more of the area while you Stand still. (laughs) 
All right, you, I can't, oh, wait, wait. Roll 20 work for me here. All right, so you see the stupid octopus be shooting me with his magic beams. Yes. As with the last force blast that's there, the light in the uh, in the emerald goes out. Ah! <laughs> you seem to be moving unimpugned but you notice a a hold, hold a skeleton down here while he's going over there the 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 the, the ritual is still going on you have uncovered a a skeleton fo focusing facing away from you and since you haven't been screaming, notice real close to it. It has not noticed you. How far into the ritual are we? I'd say you're about halfway. 50 more rounds and you can come play too. Uh, you're not an initiative yet. Sienna, the stupid octopus be shooting me with his magic beams! You should kill it. Oh, no. You're supposed to be his babysitter, not his, you know, his muse. Not his instigator. <laughs> All right. Fiona's so. really frustrated because she didn't even want to come in here. So <laughs> All right. you get what you get. <laughs> so you, we're going to say that Thongram, as he's marching around this thing, notices scorch, scorch marks on the wall throughout the room with the bones of various creatures, large and small, scattered across the floor. Um, at this point, the light in the, um, in the octopus statue in the gym has, has started to glow dimly. I, you stupid octopus, I get you. All right, you moved closer and you've noticed that it did not shoot you. All right, I'm going to try something. I'm going to move up here and I'm going to take a sack out of my backpack and put the sack over the over the gym. Okay, well, as you moved up, I need you to roll me a dexterity saving throw. All right, you take one damage, and the light in the statue goes out. I, I still put put the sack over it. And now you can't see it. Or hear it. Your list. The sack will explode. While well, I mean, here. somebody will feel it. So. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna say that the ritual is probably up, and you clearly detect. Hey, do you detect that magic? <laughs> <laughs> detect the magic. You you happen to notice that the statue in the middle of the room is is glowing somewhat magically. Uh, and also that the hallway that you just came out of is also glowing. The entire hallway is glowing with a faint aura of magic. Actually, not faint. It's a, a strong aura of magic. But no, like, places that might be noticeable as triggers or anything like that? No. It, you, you, you see a, a strong... Um, a strong aura of magic, as if the, uh, hang on, let me read this again. 
Ah, uh, you also uh, school of magic. I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, say evocation. It's a. It was a, clearly an evocation magic on, on both of these, both of these areas. Okay. From where I'm standing, what's that red wall thingy that you do? Oh, that was me drawing something wrong. I was trying to reveal. I was the excited. Area. Yeah. No. I was excited there for a second. All right. So uh, what I was saying is the skeleton is starting uh, is starting to move and and notice you. Um, let's see here. Um, I throw a javelin at it. Do I see it? You d you do see it. <laughs> uh, and I guess we'll go ahead and roll an initiative. <laughs> Uh, as soon as you're done flinging a javelin at it. What? Sorry. Go ahead and fling the javelin, and then we'll go into uh, initiative. <laughs> Whole lots of stuff happening, you know. <laughs> I thought I was highlighted, and it wasn't. All right, so the javelin... Um, okay, yeah, let me, let me resolve a whole, a whole bunch of things real quick. <laughs> so the first thing I need to resolve... Okay, the bag is over the, the statue. The obscuring the the gem. Thongram has managed to strike at the gem, uh, but it it did not leave a scratch or a dent or any mark um, on on the emerald. Um, it seems like it may be indestructible. Um, the javelin hits um, hits the skeleton. and uh, takes a severe amount of damage, uh, but it's, it turns and starts chasing after you. Um, and we will say we are, in, in, uh, we are now in initiative. I, I messed up again, can you fix me? Yeah, what how did you, you roll? Rolling? What's that? How do, how do you roll initiative? Are you clicking on your character sheet? Yeah, I go over and click on the initiative button on my character sheet. Okay, because we're using the macro, and the macro won't let us roll if we're not targeting ourselves. Well, no, I'm, but, yeah. Oh, I just mean, like, I just did what you did, but because I didn't have myself targeted, it didn't even let me roll. Whereas it's letting you roll because you're using your character sheet. Oh. There's an initiative macro you can use, and then it gives you an error if nothing's selected. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know. See, that's what I, the, when I initially was doing that, if I clicked on the button, it, it didn't matter if I had myself selected or not. It was always me. Gotcha. So now it's... it's I think it's always got to know what token, because it doesn't necessarily know, because that character sheet could represent more than one token. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. I don't know where this macro is then. Where do, what do I click on to make the macro work? Um, and then, I, I mean, mine should be 14 because that's what I've gotten in there. On the toolbar in the top right where it's got chat and all that stuff, the fifth option, the hamburger bars. Uh-huh. There, The first thing should be macros, name, initiative. Check the end bar and then check the show macro quick bar button. Uh, the show macro quick bar I haven't had. And that should mine's in the bottom. I don't. You were talking yeah, about the same I place. My, yeah, I see it now. Thank you. And I have one for sneak attack down there too, so it's you know it's helpful to do the fun stuff. Oh, gotcha. I might make a perception one. 
Oh, this is customizable for each yeah, of us? This, yeah, you, do you see my sneak attack macro? Oh, okay, so that's what you're doing. Okay, got it. Okay, I'll, I'll look at that yeah. at some point. Yeah, I guess he can make global ones, and you can make your own custom ones for yourself. Alrighty then. All right, so I think everything is started. And so we have a skeleton down here that has been oh, alerted to your presence. And he's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six this way um, and has a short bow uh, and is just going to swing at the first person he sees which is Thongrum with a short bow miss miss all right this the light within the the uh, octopus statue in the gym, while uh, you can faintly see it, starts to glow a a stronger uh, a stronger green glow. Thongrim, you are up. All right. Mine are just skeletons going down there just smack them around. I take that back. Um, oh, no, no, I'm good. Yeah, we're good. Never mind. You're fine. You're up. Sorry. The beat the initiative or the is the trap? The the bees? Yeah, that's the that's the trap. I'm going to rage as a bonus action. And I'm going to attempt to push. You th so you think I could push this statue over? Like is it is it um, super big or I don't know how but how like what's the size of this thing? Is it more like a pedestal or is it like a giant statue? And it's kind of a giant statue. I was thinking monolithic in in nature. I mean, it's you know five it foot it takes up the full five five foot square, so you know five feet by five feet. But I mean, it's a it's a fairly substantial thing. All right. Well, then I'm gonna. Run. I mean, I, I suppose you probably could, but I, I don't know if you have enough. Uh, you know, it'd probably be a DC 25 or something. I'm going to just run at the skeletons then. All right, as you... I need to dodge my thing. You need to do a dexterity save for me, because as you run, the the uh, the emerald f shoots out, bursting out of the sack, and... All right, so you take a... You take a one, one damage of force damage from the statue. And the light dims. This this one, right? Yeah, that one. Yep. Yeah. All right. 
That is a hit. Uh, but it is not a not a kill. I'm done. Elden. Uh, hold on. Um, I don't know if this is actually on my character sheet. I did find out that I have uh, advantage on dexterity saving rolls when I can see something, interestingly enough. That's good to know. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, guys. Oh. I mean, Rick, oh, jeez. Calm down, Morty. Just a skeleton, Rick. I mean, jeez. It's not that special, Morty. We're all skeletons. Just, we have meat. Okay, where, okay, where am I? Um, it's my max move. Here. And then... and what, right now I can see to here, right? So I can see that there's four of them over there. Yes. But I know they're far away. I need to get further. Okay. Um, and how far did Dongle get out there? 30 feet is my blast. So, all right. So, Don't sweat me. Just blast away. Well, no, I'm not worried about blowing you away, but um, I do need to get closer to you so that I can... Um, I think I'm going to go to... Okay, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to move up to here. Careful, he's uncovered the pool floaties. Great. The pool floaties of doom. To there. I'm sure my move might incur a beam of light. Uh, the emerald is uh, dim. You uh, have not been hit with anything. Okay, and then I'm going to use my um, spells, spells, bless on the the same way I did before on the three. Uh, Thongrim, Thongrim, Orin, and Siona. That was blessing, right? Yeah, so Yeah, exactly. And then uh that's that's where I'll stop right there. Okay. Well. All right. Retconning for rage damage. So that skeleton is still not dead, but it is hurt a little bit more. And how does, because uh, I don't want to look it up, I uh, figure Will will know offhand. If you, have ris if you have weaknesses to something, what does that do? Doubles the damage. Doubles the damage. Okay. Historically, we've not really been doing weaknesses and uh, resistances consistently. I know, and I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, most things don't have resistance other than Thongrim. I'm thinking about all the crossbow bolts we fired into that tree 
<laughs> and I was like, hey, if it takes eight damage, I'm good with that. What type of damage does your great axe do? Slashing? Sure. Yes. That's what I thought. This one moves up to Thongram, and... For the record, it actually says when he did damage, has seven slashing. I wasn't even looking. Yeah. I know, just, it, it, it'll tell you under the damage they did. Alright, so, the skeleton attacks for 22, I'm assuming that's a hit. That'll hit, yep. For three? For one. Yep, yeah, half that. The, oh, the half four, one. the plus one would have been the crit. So, yeah, half that for one, because you're raging. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Alright. This guy. Well, he's right here, so he's going to follow suit and. Miss. And, yeah, we're done here. Raz, you're up. Well, I accidentally did it early. I guess I'll pull out my character sheet. But yeah, I, I strike a piece of bent steel over my flute, like like a flint striker over steel, and sparks fly out, and I cast fairy fire in a, in a cube starting pretty much right over Thongrim, and then, and then going outward for me. Yeah, so it should, should be all the skeletons in the 25th cube. Okay. Uh, yep, just barely. So, dexterity saves. Alright. One... Two, three, four, five. So the fourteen saves. All right. So the fourteen. So this this guy saves. The other four do not. Blue dot. Did that get me too? Yes. So apparently we have a glowing dwarf too. Oh, does it really affect friendlies? Is I, it all creatures? I, I assumed it was. Hmm. If I if I knew that, could I retcon and try not to hit my partner? Hang on. That's just the one they glow and then do advantage on, right? You would have had that. You would. You better basically started it one lower than me and hit the four there, which, if you did it that way, would basically have the same result because the one above it missed anyway. So, well, but, but I'll leave that up to the GM. Well. Yeah, I'll just leave that up. I don't either way. It says each object, so I would say it's it would be friendly right. or foe. All right, I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm going to wreck on this. I mean, in okay. conscious. I'm I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hit that the one adjacent to Thongrim on this flank, but I'm going to hit the four below. And you can reroll if you want. That's fine. No, I'm good. We'll just we'll we'll leave it as is because we we got a hard stop in like eight minutes. So I'm trying to. Okay, cool. I'm done. Siona, you're up. I move forward. And I'm going to use my flail to attack that one. Show me again. 
That one? Oh, okay. Oh, and I have a 1d4 thing? And advantage. Yeah. Oh, no, so it's a 14. You, yeah, if you've got advantage, that's a hit. That's a hit, yes. Uh, you uh, destroy the uh, the skeleton. It it explodes in shards of bone. Ah, be watch where you swing at that thing. You done? Anything else? Um. No, I'm my turn. All right, so it's going to move up here and it's going to uh, go after Siona with a short sword. And that is a miss. Same thing for that guy. 22. I assume that's hits. Yes. I'm pretty sure a 22 hits all of us all the time. <laughs> Corin, you're up. All right. I am going to just get right in the thick of things. And the ones with the nets, what's that? Those are the... Uh, I was trying, trying to do the fairy fire on that one, and I decided to go blue. Okay. So the, the all four of those, except yeah. for the top one. Correct. Is one of is one of the two ones I can reach damage? I don't think so. Unless uh, it was one of the javelin ones. The, the, the javelin one, which is that guy. Okay, well I'm going to take my dagger out and stab at that guy. Okay. I don't see you on the screen. Anymore. I'm hiding under the X. He's under the dead guy. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yeah. Uh, that, that's yeah, yes, that is a hit. So I hit for 16 damage. Okay. Yep. That is dead. All right. I'm take the dagger in my off hand. I'm gonna attack the guy right there since you said he's already been hit. Okay. Yeah, that's a hit. So that's four more damage. And it is also dead. Alright, and... I guess I'm done. Alright. The emerald in the statue uh, glows a bright green. Thongrim, you are up. So if you grapple an enemy, can you throw an enemy? Or is that different? That's different. There's got to be a mechanic for it, though. I mean, you should be able to... I mean, there is, but uh, grappling... You'd have to grapple it first, and then uh, a separate action. It wouldn't be... Okay, I'm going to grapple this skeleton to raging I get an advantage for strength checks. And then while holding that skeleton So while holding a skeleton, I'm going to run back towards the statue with the skeleton in front of me. Half 
Wi-Fi man in, right? So I would be like, if I was here or here, whatever one puts me in the range first, then this one would be like right on top of me, I guess. Yeah, I didn't know where the blast range was, so it was wherever that would... I'd probably stop whenever the beam shot out at the skeleton. The bone shield. That didn't work as well as I thought it would. <laughs> I'm done. You put a lot of status effects on him, at least. 